So of course I'm using a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent lens today and you know what that means? That means that Jordan and I have come to an agreement and I'm now contractually obligated to only complain about it once this entire video and even at that it has to be a very subtle aside. So That's right. I'm saving it, I'm not going to waste it now, so I'm excited to play with this brand new lens because 35 millimeters are just so dang versatile. Welcome back to Preview TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and today we've got the brand new Fujifilm XF 23mm 1.4 WRLM. Now, as you've seen a lot of our previous videos, Fujifilm has been updating their older prime lenses, and we've been testing them. The 23mm is no exception. Got a brand new optical formula here over the older 23, and I'm excited to play with it. So taking a look at handling on this new lens, I would say the new 23 millimeter is actually ever so slightly larger than the old 23 millimeter. It is about 60 grams heavier, 360 grams in total. Not a big deal. I mean, uh, if you're old like me, it's about the same weight as a C battery. And if you've never heard of that before, let's go with small Kiwi. Otherwise though, it does have the weather sealing and that is maybe part of the extra weight, but that's a great change to have. Oddly enough though, the filter size has actually shrunk a little bit. This is a 58 millimeter filter thread size. Very common and shared with a lot of the other Fuji Primes. The old 23 was a 62 millimeter. Other changes here, because we now have a linear motor in this lens, we unfortunately do not have a manual focus clutch. You can't just activate manual focus by clicking the focus ring forward or backwards. That's something I'm going to miss, but I think the autofocusing speed will make up for that. And lastly, we now do have an aperture ring with an A pause lock setting here. So now let's talk about the autofocus experience between the older 23 millimeter lens and the new linear motor equipped 23 millimeter because really the experience is what it's all about. So first off as a photographer, the older 23 millimeter lens, it's fairly slow to get from close to far focus and there's lots of jittering. I mean, lots of noise. It's not a very pleasurable experience. Now moving to the new 23 millimeter, it's much faster, very quick. That's gonna be appreciably beneficial for photography but also for videography it's much smoother and quieter. So overall, I think this is a big improvement. So one of the things that was kind of lackluster about the older 23 millimeter lens, other than the fact that it was a 35 equivalent, was the fact that it didn't have very good close focusing capability. Uh, basically one to 10 macro, 0.1 magnification, and that was at 28 centimeters from the sensor plane. So the new 23 millimeter is an improvement. We're now getting double the magnification. This is like one to five life size reproduction, 0.2 magnification, and this does it at 19 centimeters from the sensor plane. So if you want to get Disney princess shots with birds coming to your hand because they've been fed way too much in this park, well, you can pull that off. So Jordan has requested that I position myself precariously on this downward slope, ready to fall at any moment. It's going to be embarrassing, but he says the shot looks great. So let's do a quick talk. Let's talk about sun stars. Now, this lens is a pre-production lens, and actually Fujifilm has told us the coatings are not final, so I cannot talk about flare here. I'm going to touch on sun stars, but that might change as well. That's usually more to do with the iris shape, the nine-bladed aperture that we have inside this lens. And I would actually say there's potential here for some quite interesting sun stars. You can see here long drawn out tines, quite nice, quite dramatic. So I think it's a beautiful lens for that. So Jordan wants me to talk about two aspects here when it comes to video work on the 23 millimeter lens. First, let's talk about manually focusing these lenses because as we found in the past with other Fujifilm primes, it can be quite difficult in linear mode to try to get these things to focus precisely where you want them to. Often it just stops a little bit short or goes a little bit too far. And you have to readjust and suffice to say it makes it difficult to get nice precise manual focusing on this lens. So unfortunately we still recommend this lens best used for video work in auto focusing modes. However the good news is focus breathing characteristics are really nice on this lens which is to say there's almost none. If the camera's focusing or you're focusing manually from near to far or far to near you'll notice that the focal length really doesn't change. That's a great characteristic to have. So overall as long as you're auto focusing Jordan's very pleased to use this in video work. So as usual, this is where we take a break. You know, we're gonna collect more samples, take a look at photos on the computer, and you know, sort of solidify our findings. So when you see us again, we'll finish our conclusion of the 23 millimeter Fujifilm lens. 
And we're back, so let's talk about the rest of this lens. So first off, I did test for LOCA, longitudinal chromatic aberration, looking for those color casts in the foreground and background out of focus areas. And I'm happy to report that the Fujifilm 23 millimeter is very clean. Now when it comes to bokeh, I did some tests here. At 1.4, we are seeing some cat's eye in the corners, but it largely goes away almost immediately as you begin to stop down. The bokeh is nice and round, quite smooth. I like the way this lens rendered transitions from in focus to out of focus. However, I will say that there are some onion rings in the actual bokeh balls themselves, but otherwise overall really smooth results. Now let's talk about sharpness because again the 23 millimeter LMWR is a new optical formula and Fujifilm has been very excited about sharpness improvements on this lens and I did see that. So let's first off look at the new lens here at 1.4 in the center. You can see it's outstandingly good even completely wide open. But let's take a look at the older 23 millimeter 1.4 in the center as well. It's still a fantastically sharp lens and I like it wide open but I do see a narrow improvement in the newer lens and that's a really great thing to see. Now as we stop down to f2.8 in the centers by this point everything looks great and if you stop down further I think you're already getting excellent results regardless. All right now let's talk about corner sharpness. We're actually going to start with the older 23 millimeter. Looking at it here wide open in the corner you can see that it's still pretty mushy and when we stop down a little bit that helps but it never quite gets super sharp. Now when we look at the brand new 23 millimeter you can see it's much nicer even at 1.5 four there's some softness there but it holds together better and when we stop down those corners sharpen up really nicely. I also didn't notice any difference focusing in the center specifically to the corner so it looks like we have a pretty flat focusing lens. So it looks like we have another nicely improved Fujifilm Prime lens. I mean, I like that this lens is not substantially heavier or larger, but now we do get the weather sealing. The autofocus for photography is silent and fast. And I do like that this is improved optically over the old formula in pretty much every way. And that's saying a lot because the older lens is still an awesome lens optically. So for me as a photographer, I think the newer Fujifilm 23 millimeter makes the most sense. That's what I would buy. But if you're a videographer and you really like manually focusing, you might still want to look at the older 23 millimeter lens because it has that manual focus clutch mechanism. And that really does make things nicer for manual focusing over the newer lenses. Otherwise, I would definitely go this way. Now there are also some other options out there. There's third party stuff. Veltrux does make a very similar lens, but unfortunately we haven't had a chance to test it. That is something we would love to do but I still think this is a great way to go if you don't have a 35 millimeter equivalent lens yet and they are the best then this might be a great way to go please do leave comments below let us know what you think do check out dpreview.com we have our sample gallery for this lens you can see that link in the description below please like our channel subscribe to our channel that's the best way to show us that you like us and we shall see you soon with another episode of dpreview tv